So what you should be able to do, uh, if you've got everything, your IP address and everything correct, if you go onto this button up here, you get a choice of different connection modes. Um, and the first one to, to give a try really is the direct mode. If you go on connect in direct mode, then you get a, a terminal up here like that on the, uh, on the right hand side. I'll get rid of these release notes. So it's just simply a terminal connection and when you press enter you get a, um, a prompt like that. So if you've got that far you know you've actually got a connection on Ethernet. It is actually connected to the controller. If you can get that prompt. So if I, if I know the commands um, I can actually type them in. So anybody who remembers uh, the good old DOS, if I type DIR similar to DOS I get a report of what's in the controller, the directory of the controller like that. Um, so that is all just, um, you know, I've got, obviously got an empty one here. If, uh, if I know commands of other things, I can, I can interrogate them. So I could uh, put a question mark and say, what's the speed of, of axis three? Uh, and I get an answer back. So if I know the command, I can, I can simply type it in interactively like that. And this, this is something we call the command line, command line terminal. Um, if, if you're stuck at any point and can't connect to a controller properly, then this is the fundamental mode that tells you whether you've got some connection possibility or not. Yeah. So it, if, if it's playing up and says, like, you know, it can't, throws up an error when you try and connect to a project properly, if you go back to direct mode, then you can confirm that at least you've got some kind of connection. The next mode is, is to go to tool mode. Now in tool mode, uh, you, it starts um, a more uh, sync, s s sort of sophisticated connection to the, to the controller, where Motion Perfect itself is now sending data backwards and forwards and receiving data. Um, and it allows you to use various tools. So you can see on my little screen here, I've got uh, an input output tool open. So if I turn on an output, I can do that. I'm actually turning the outputs live at the moment on a controller that's in my office. <coughs> and I could see inputs that are appearing as well. Um, there's also an axis parameters tool, so you can see what's going on on the axes that are connected. Gives you the information like what the gains are, the speeds are, uh, and whether the axis is moving or not. And we have various viewers for memory locations as well. So something here called a VR viewer. I'm looking at an area of memory called VRs. Um, just a little tip while we're doing this is, is that you can actually grab these tabs. They don't have to be tabbed like that. So you, you can lay things out how you want. So if I grab hold of that one, I can move it around and say, well, actually, I, I want to have my VR viewer over here at the bottom of that panel. Uh, so you can rearrange the desktop as you want, really. So I can move that down there. I could sort of say, right, I want my axis parameters over on this side. So I want them to the right hand side of that. There's my axis parameters. Um, I can't really move this one now because it's it's the only one in the middle, but uh, you, you get the gen the general idea, really. Um, other, other tools you've got, you've still got the terminal over here, so I can still type DIR and do what I want over there. Um, but there are better ways and other ways to see the directory. So if I go to the controller menu, um, I could look at the, um, oops, sorry, the full directory trying to think now whether that's in this menu or the final one. Must be in the controller one. Can anyone see oh yeah directory, there we go. I just couldn't quite see it. Um, no programs to display, which which agrees with what's over here, doesn't it? Because there are no programs. So that that makes some sense. Um, so you you've got different ways to see the same thing. So if, if you're not using the terminal then that controller directory would be the, would be the better way to see it. Now in this mode I can use all these tools and I can look at the controller and I can see what's going on inside the controller but I can't actually write any programs. This has been deliberately done because if you've got a, a technician you want to just maybe do some adjustments on the machine you don't want him to change the programs so you can get him to go into tool mode and then it's pretty safe he can't actually look at the programs. Um, if I want to do the full thing, then I have to go into synchronize mode, this sync mode here. And this is where we start getting this panel that I talked about coming up, where it's saying, right, I've got the project on my PC, 
and I have a controller there with nothing in it, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to synchronize with that uh, by loading those programs in? Or do you want me to start from a fresh program um, or choose some other program? Okay, we seem to have failed to connect there for some reason. Let's try again. So I'm going to change to a different project. I suspect there's a problem with the project I've chosen there. Okay, I think it was just that one's hidden under the other. So I'm going to copy that across and synchronize. And having done that, I've now copied whatever program that was from my project I had. Um, you may get this coming up occasionally, this um, update the function blocks bit. Um, if you're not using the IEC programming language, then just don't worry about it. You don't need it. So I'm going to cancel that. That's to do with the function blocks in the, in the PLC language. Okay, so, um, sorry, a bit of fiddling there, but we've actually managed to connect OK. Now we're in synchronized mode, we actually have a program here, so I can open that up. Hello, I'm still in tool mode. Cancel. Right. Well, this is a, <laughs> this is showing you something that uh, doesn't happen very very often. But it, it seems to have gone into sync mode. But there's nothing there. There's only the, the bare bones of it. Um, and you can see in the in the window uh, menu I've just highlighted there that. Um, I actually haven't got my controller tree window turned on, so if I turn that on, that makes that appear. So that, that's controlled by a flag in, the, in that window directory. It should have come up automatically, but I'm not sure why it didn't. Um, so now I can open my program up and, and see it in there. So there's my program. And again, if I now type DIR in here again, we can see that I actually have the program in the memory. And again, we can get programs in here, directory. It's appearing there as well. So, okay, everything's, everything's back to normal. Sorry about the fiddling about. Um, what you guys are going to do is actually start a new program. So you'll, you'll have to go to either right-click on programs here and choose new, or you go up to the file program menu up here and choose new. There's two ways to do it. So if I go for a new program there, you see a lot of choices. We've got basic, basic library, text, all sorts of things. We'll just stick to the basic one at the moment, so we're just going to do our program in basic. So we'll stick with the top choice and just give it a name. Um, so uh, I'm going to be boring and call it main again. <coughs> and then once you're in the program, you can then start typing lines of code uh, as you need to. So um, I could make a variable. And then I can set the variable to a value, for example. So ah, that's a very, very simple program there. Uh, I could put in print A as well. And then when I run the program, you see nothing's happened yet. And it's not compiled because there's a question mark there. Um, if I just run it, it will automatically compile and then run. So if I do that, we get on the screen there, on the terminal, we get what I printed coming up. Um, so that, that terminal has two uses. You can either enter things in here. Um, so uh, like I said, I can do my question mark something in here. So what version of firmware is it, for example? It would be like that. Um, or I can actually print things to it from a program. We have the option of more terminals than that. There's a, a, a drop down box here with actually three more terminals, not just channel zero. Uh, and in fact, those are really specifically there for you to use in programs. Because if you print a lot of stuff to this terminal, 
and you also wanted to type in a command, it becomes quite difficult because if there's a lot of stuff being printed here continuously, it's very difficult to break in and, and get a command printed, um, uh, get a command entered. So if you if you actually open another terminal, say channel five here, that appears down here. Now that has no interaction. I can't I can't type anything in there from from Motion Perfect. It's there specifically so that if I have a program, I can put print hash five comma a and then my value appears down in that window instead of the main terminal zero window. Mm -hmm. So it just, just gives you the opportunity to, to push information out of programs into, into their own separate terminals. Okay, so there's a lot of features in Motion Perfect that I'm not going to go through every single one and bore you to death, but we'll find them as we go along uh, as, as we're using Motion Perfect. Um, if we can get into this stage and we can write a program, then really we're, we're on the road to starting and, uh, and getting, getting going.